Let's get it. This is Life's Essential Ingredients with Jeff and a mic, where we hope to inform, inspire, and transform lives one essential ingredient at a time. Welcome to the show. Listeners, thanks again for tuning in to another episode. Still can't believe the honor that I have to just meet people from all over the world, interview incredible guests that are doing so much to help our world. And today is no different. We are season two, episode 38, and we have Tina McDermott coming from the Washington, D.C. area. And first of all, where you can find her, just go to her website is the best place. And that's TinaMcDermott.com. And I'll spell her last name, M C D. E-R-M-O-T-T. So Tina McDermott.com. And first of all, about Tina, uh, she's been working in the health and wellness industry for almost 20 years. And there's nothing more she would like to do with her life than help people develop their health, wellness, and physical fitness. Tina has been featured on CBS, Fox, NBC, ABC, MMC, and coaches individuals, small groups, and corporations. Tina specializes in helping people with their emotional issues of eating and is an expert at helping people lose weight. Tina, thank you for dedicating your life to helping others develop a holistic self, and thanks for being our guest on Life's Essential Ingredients. Tina, welcome to the show. Thank you so much. What a wonderful introduction. I really appreciate that, Jeff. Uh, It's one of my favorite parts of this show is getting to just highlight the life's work of people because I really think it's so important. We spend so much time in working and being able to take a step back and, and just to be able to listen and kind of be humbled a little bit of, man, here's all the work, here's all the people that I'm doing. And so I love to introduce people and I love to just see the smile on their face. And uh, so thank you for that. And so you don't know, but we, we start every episode with a thought of the day. And I don't know, we're probably close to 100 episodes now and the pressure is on me, but uh, we're 100% on these quotes like hitting home with the guest. Uh, and so this is a, I wouldn't say I'm going out on a limb, but uh, yeah, I'm going to be curious to see what you think about this quote. And it's uh, from someone that's just unknown. Um, so here it goes. Surrendering is not a cop out, nor a sign of weakness. It takes courage and faith to let go of control. It actually fosters an empowering sense of relief. I did not quit. I surrendered. I have chills from my head to my toes and almost near tears because you had said in my introduction, I help people overcome their emotions. And we like to stuff the emotions down and not look at them, not talk to them and not be with them. And and I allow people through some of the processes that want the process I do is called the peace process to actually talk about it, not even talk about it. It's the wrong word to, to feel it, to feel those feelings and surrender to those feelings because our biggest fears are our are, are fears of feelings are the fear of feeling those things that we don't want to fear feel. And I'm saying, let's feel them in a very safe way place in an incredibly safe place with me and surrender to them it's okay it's okay to surrender it's not a step back it's a step forward it's a step through because think about it how can you get to the other side when there's 20 brick buildings full of emotions in your way and all you need to do is surrender to them and the ladder will appear for you to climb easily on up and over each and every one of them. And I just came up with that with the top of my head about the ladders and the buildings just happened. I love it. I love it. Well, that's, what's great. And you and I share that, but when you are just so passionate about what you do, 
the words are just there because it's just in your DNA and it's just in your heart and your soul. And so you take something that you probably never said before and like, where did that come from? Well, it just came from deep within. It's just been sitting there waiting to come out. And it just goes back to that empowering feeling that you're talking about of when you can get into that space of surrendering and just letting your your true self come out and that's one thing i wholeheartedly believe that each person has been given a gift in this world and it's on you tina it's on me and it's in any listener uh in the 36 countries where people are tuning into this show of hey get out there and help each other feel that sense of empowerment and to be able to share their gift because the the world needs that uh, yeah. So, yeah, I'm so excited for this show uh, and we're going to get into all those. And I'm really curious into your your peace. Uh, I think you call it peace process uh, to, to get in and explore that. But I kind of want uh, I always like starting the shows off with just getting the listeners to kind of um, learn a little bit about you. And so it's a very broad question. But what was <laughs> life like growing up? And you can take that from any any part of your life growing up to to where you are now. Just give the listeners a sense of, of who Tina is. All right. I'll do a real quick one. What came up for me and my parents are literally off the boat Italian. I've been going back and forth to Italy my whole life. I've always been very different from everybody. I speak another language. I eat differently than everybody else because we always have Italian home meals. We always sat down to dinner together. I didn't bond with a lot of people growing up because I was in Italy over the summers when everybody else gets together at the pool. I just became a member of a pool. I'm 54 years old. And my husband's like, you kidding me? We've been members of pools forever. Anyhow, I don't always been very different. And also, yeah. I always had a lot of gas and bloating and that comes to my health issues. And it was very embarrassing. I had embarrassing gas all the time. So, and I had four eyes because I always wear glasses. Now these days I typically wear glasses all the time and I have no, where are my glasses? Here they go. I wear my glasses all the time and I have zero issues with it where back then it's like, oh my God, you're four eyes and you get made fun of and all of that. So my growing up was very, very different than most people. And I had a lot of gas and bloating and health issues that correlated to Lyme disease and I a chronic Lyme disease. And I was able to overcome that, found out in my 30s that I had it. And yeah, and I also have a, a sister at the age of 24 was diagnosed with cancer, breast cancer, and she decided to make her transition, I think 11 years ago now. Her birthday was just the other day, Anna. I celebrate her on a daily basis. I even wear her on my sleeve. And so she's my love, my inspiration. And I have pictures of her behind my computer. So she's always looking over at me. So that's a, kind of a nutshell of who I am and what my inspirations are to help others with health and wellness. Because we're not here in this world to suffer. We're here for love. We're here for joy. And I want to help inspire people to get there. Mm, mm, man, that's a lot. Um, yeah, I'm just, I'm always taking notes. You know, Mike and I started this show to just want to help just one person. You know, if we can just do that, that one person leads to two. Uh, and that I found that that one person is always me, uh, for sure. <laughs> I get so much out of, you know, researching the guest mm -hmm. and then, uh, uh, taking notes. So yeah, don't, don't think that while you're talking that I'm on my phone uh, uh, doing something. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm taking a lot of notes. And I do want to challenge you for a quick second on, on what you said. And I'm sorry to hear about your sister. Love that you have uh, dealt with that and now use that as a source of inspiration um, to share your gift. And I love the tattoo. It's beautiful and a great way to, to honor her. Um, but I, I'm going to disagree with you a little bit and, and this is going to sound kind of weird. Um, but the suffering piece, you know, my, my wife and I just did the Camino de Santiago. I don't know if you're familiar with that. Yes, yeah. yes, yes, yes. We did, um, we started in Pamplona and then finished it. And so it was, we missed the first three legs of it and a big part of that journey I would say, and suffering might be too strong of a word, but there was suffering. You know, I think, I think going through that pain and embracing it and kind of letting it marinate a little bit 
just no. I mean, it's again, I don't mean to be disrespectful, but like going through the loss of your sister, you know, you did suffer through that and felt that pain and had to let it marinate. And they said, okay, how do I want that to be now reflected in the choices that I'm going to make moving forward? And I'm going to surrender to that suffering and not carry that with me and not allow that to to keep me down and i'm gonna use that as my source of strength and so i think sometimes sometimes we we run from these areas of our life that if we can let it marinate just for a little bit and 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 kind of go through and really own that suffering and interpret it and then again, okay, well now, now I know what that means. Now I'm going to empower myself and move forward. So I don't know if you think I'm smoking crack or what, but that's my, my two cents uh, on that word suffer. So when you, when I first said that something came up in me and I felt something from you, like, oh, he's going to challenge me on that. I felt it. So I knew that that was going to happen. When... And, and, and I am not going to debate with you. Oh, my gosh, no, because you brought something really beautiful to the surface is I don't I'm an athlete. So how do we build muscle? Will you break it down and then it builds back up? Right. I'm a cyclist, which if you know anything about cycling, it is the most gruesome, not grueling, gruesome, grueling. It's a really challenging sport. And you're constantly struggling to, to and fighting and I'm not even fighting here. You're, you're suffering. Okay. And that kind of suffering to me is different. It, it, it's always soul enriching, right? When that kind of suffering happens, soul enriching. And even the suffering of doing the, uh, the, the, the El Camino, the, what is it called again? The, the Santiago, the, yeah, that one. <sighs> There's a lot of soul searching that happens there. And trust me, when I'm climbing up a mountain on my bicycle, there's a lot of soul searching happening to get to the next uh, level. And when I'm suffering, going through the loss of a loved one, my sister, you know, I'm going through um, my health issues, that suffering. Yes, suffering is, is a part of life. When I say life is not for suffering, life is for joy, what I mean is that go through the suffering, but don't stay there. Do whatever it is that you can learn from it. I love that you said marinate in it. Don't stay there. You know, there's people that are constantly, are like perpetually depressed, perpetual complainers, perpetual on the downside and that's not life to me life is okay let's let's go through it let's learn from it and now let's inspire others to not have to suffer so much i broke my leg my father lost his leg in a motorcycle accident and i broke my leg i had pins i had rods and i have all these things and i'm in pain and i said you know what if my dad can go through nine surgeries and lose his leg and still have phantom pains, I can go through this and I can be stronger from it. And I learned so much about my life in the suffering of that leg that I've been able to help others through that. My point, Jeff, suffering happens. Sometimes it's self-inflicted suffering, like climbing mountains on your bicycle or doing the, 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 the walk. Yeah. And it's so that you can grow and you can be a better human being to help others. Because I truly believe that, yes, we are here for joy, but we're here to serve and our serve as you, you are an amazing servant in this world, especially the children, it sounds like. Then we are here to serve. So if you're in the suffering, don't stay there. Learn from it. Move forward and into, into what you're here on this planet for. Mm, I love it. I love it. Uh, so let's, let's go the opposite of suffering and joyful. And I know that's one of the words that you use and it's kind of, is that a nickname? Is it, uh, uh, just let's talk uh, to the listeners about, uh, that word and what that means to you. Cause I know that's kind of who you are. 
Yeah, I'm all about that joy. I even sing yeah. songs all about that joy, right? <laughs> um, yeah, so I, I have um, a TV show. It's Tina's Joyful Kitchen. I have a YouTube channel and, and, and everything. It's all about that joy. It's about joy in cooking. It's about joy in feeding your family, your friends, your clients, because, you know, people hire me all over the place. And, oh, my gosh, through the pandemic, I was doing everything virtually. And I couldn't feed them. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I believe that you can find joy in the kitchen, even if you don't know how to cook or like to cook, so that you can live a life that's healthy, vibrant, and free from diets, free from disease, free from all of those things. And joy, joy just became, it's a part of me. Back to, I don't believe that you need to stay in suffering. We work towards being in joy and in love. It's one of the highest vibrations that we can be that be in. And you don't have to go all the way from suffering to joy. It's a stair step. Take those stairs. It's a stair, stair step to get there, but it's a high vibration. And when you're in that higher vibration, Jeff, you are you you have the ability to do your purpose in life. Back to that. Back to service. When you're in joy, you can serve and you can fulfill your mission. Um, joy. It's just, it's a, I, I'm surprised. I have three dogs and two cats. I'm surprised none of them are named Joy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm surprised none of them are. Um, but yeah, so it's all about that joy. All about that joy. Uh, and I know you have, uh, as part of your kitchen, uh, four keys to a joyful gut. What, yeah, what, what are those? I'm going to go through them quickly and then we'll we'll dive into if you want, to, want me to dive in. And it's keys to a joyful gut. I had Lyme disease, terrible gut from a kid, okay? Um, you drink your water. You eat foods that walk, fly, swim, and grow. You eat back to mother nature, right? Eat foods that are back to mother nature with an emphasis on grow. Um, exercise, very important to a joyful gut is exercising. And de-stressing, meditation, sleep. I'm putting I'm putting all of those into one little category there. Okay. And I can put them all in one category, but it's all good. So those are to me the keys to a joyful gut. I love it. I love it. Do you want to expand on any of them? I mean, that's a whole like long podcast. It's just let me break it down a little bit and ask you some little more specific questions of of how uh, maybe I'm a client that's just coming on and hey Tina, how much how much water? So I'm six eight and two hundred and thirty pounds. And Mike and I, you don't know, not that it, this has anything to do with this statement, but you were saying that you're an athlete. We played college basketball, and that's where we met at University of San Francisco. Uh, and so love everything that you're doing and wholeheartedly believe in it. And then from my background as a nurse. Uh, yeah, you know, everything that you're doing is just, we need more Tina's out there advising <laughs> and, and coaching up clients uh, to, to learn how to take care of themselves. But how much, how much water, if that's a, I don't know if that's a naive question, but yeah, what, yeah, yeah how do you advise your clients on, on how much water to drink? It is the number one subject that I talk to my clients about. That's where we start with water. That's where we start. Our body is made of water. When they go and look for life on other planets, they look for water and then they find life. Okay. You need water. Our bodies are water. I can talk about water for hours, Jeff, hours, but we need to drink half of our body weight in ounces a day. And that's a formula, right? What are you, 230? So you need to drink 115 ounces a day. However, I'm going for a long bike ride tomorrow and it's hot in the DC area. So today I am drinking even more to super hydrate. I'm staying away from coffee. I'm staying away from anything else. There's this drink that I like to drink that uh, uh, I love kombucha, but I mix it with seltzer water and a little coconut water. So I have just a little bit of that, but the rest is water. I don't have room for any other real drink, uh, any other drinks, just water so that I'm super hydrated for tomorrow. And then during the ride, I make sure that I drink in the morning. No coffee. Coffee dehydrates you. No tea. None of that when you need to super hydrate and you're doing an athletic event. And, and when you don't have to super hydrate, think half your body weight and ounces a day more if you're sweating a lot. Mm, I love it. I love it. Uh, yeah. And then you, you talked about foods that walk, fly, swim and grow. Uh, and uh, yeah, so I, I, I <laughs> let's explain more to the listeners uh, of what that means. Cause it's uh, just, uh, I think it's, 
there's just so many with uh, all the different like how you say you're not a fan of diets but all the and i used to be so i have arthritis is one of my health challenges everywhere so i was gluten-free forever uh and i'm not currently doing that anymore but there's it, it's overwhelming to go into a grocery store and i love peanut butter and there might be 36 different kinds of peanut butter uh for me to get so i love how you simplified Hey, let's put it into these categories and then yeah. that allows your clients to have a target on, all right, well, here's the foods that I'm going to select. So let's go deeper into that. Yeah. Okay. So here it is. I'm going to give you my philosophy and I'm going to give you simple things to live your life oh, for you and all of your listeners. Okay. My philosophy encompasses vegans, vegetarians, pescatarians, omnivores, herbivores, meditarians. I, I, I include everyone. I'm very inclusive with my life and with people. Okay. I want you to eat foods as close to the way that mother nature prepared them for us, the better they are. The more that they have been processed, the worse they are for you. So think about a banana, peel the banana and you eat it versus a banana that has been peeled, chopped, dehydrated, put in a bag with preservatives and then served to you hundreds of years, sorry, a year later or so, right? Okay, so think that. So again, the closer to the way that Mother Nature produced it, if you're going to buy packaged foods, five ingredients or less. If a third grader can't read it and understand it, I had to leave, add that one in there. If a third grader can't read it and understand it, should you eat it? Think that, okay? And... Eat foods that walk, fly, swim, and grow with the biggest emphasis on grow. Eat the rainbow, lots of different colors because they all have different vitamins, minerals, phytonutrients, fiber, enzymes. I can go on and on of what vegetables and fruits and fruits um, lower on the fruits if you're diabetic like much lower if you're diabetic, we're not going to go there now. But for the most part, eat mother nature, eat the foods that were grown on this earth in as close to the state as they were grown as possible. So once again, back, let's say a potato, what's better for you, the potato or that potato that was dehydrated and put in a box that you're to rehydrate the Enzymes are depleted completely. Now, look, if you're on a desert island and, and, and washed up a box of mashed potatoes in a box, eat them, okay? <laughs> eat them. But for the most part, think close to the mother nature, walk by, swim, and grow. Three-fourths of your plate should be grow. Again, as close to raw as possible. I like steamed vegetables. I love roasted vegetables. I love all of that. Don't get me wrong. Just don't overcook your vegetables, okay? Three-fourths of your plate grow. Quarter of your plate, some lean proteins, or if you're vegan, vegetarian, you can throw your beans in there as long as you soak them overnight and sprout them. Not going to get into that. And a little bit of fat on every single meal because that helps blunt the rise in blood sugar. But I'm talking good fat like olive oil, avocados, coconut oil, um, what other fat am I thinking about? Nuts and seeds. Those are wonderful fats. So that's kind of my philosophy on eating so that you can live the happiest life or the healthiest life and have a happy gut. Mm, yeah, no, I love that. And I know just for me personally, I I, uh, I told you I have an aortic root aneurysm. And so I don't eat meat anymore. And I try and cut out animal mm -hmm. products to lessen the workload on my heart because that's just going to yeah lead to atherosclerosis um but i just feel so different and so much better when i'm just eating more vegetables for me you know and a lot of fiber and then like you uh water and i'm gonna figure out and make sure i'm drinking enough water um, but i love those tips and then uh exercise what does that mean and what do you advise your clients uh, to do, you know, say it's me and I'm haven't been active and I'm not exercising currently. How would you start me off to go from being someone that's sedentary to, all right, Jeff, let's just get you up and moving. I love fitness. I've been a personal trainer for most of my life. I think I was born a personal trainer. Anyhow, although I do more, I do mostly coaching these days. I don't do personal training, but 
uh, that much. But you see, yeah, as you were talking about it, I'm standing here and I'm dancing. I have a stand up desk. So uh, I stand a lot while I'm working, obviously, because A, I'm talking now and, and my lungs can expand when I'm talking and I talk with my arms. So I need room to talk. So I'm moving. I'm moving. I am moving as I'm working. It's wonderful. I don't even consider this work. But so what I suggest to my people who are just starting my client and to everyone, to all of your listeners, get up and move your mass with a small M and everything else is capital. I'm not you can figure that out yourself. OK, get up and move your booty. I don't care if it's dancing. I don't care if it's singing, I, but twisting, stretching, walking. I personally set an alarm every hour and five minutes of that hour. I don't care how intense I am with my project, my 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 groups, my client sessions, group sessions, all 45 minutes. So I absolutely have 15 minutes in between and I have five minutes to do what? Get up and dance, sing, oh, dance and sing. That is. Run up and down the steps, run around the block, go in the backyard, play with the dogs stretch and sometimes it's just okay tina breathe stand up and breathe get your eyes away from the computer and take a break walking and stretching are the two most important things that you can do walking and stretching i want you to think about a stagnant pond full of green muck at the top that's a couch potato you put a fountain in that pond and now you've got walking and stretching. You get fresh oxygen that goes into that water and you get um, good bacteria in the water that drowns out the bad bacteria. It's the same thing with walking and stretching and even dancing, okay? It's going to bring that oxygen into your body and help you de detox your body through your lymphatic system. So it does not have to be, you don't have to be an athlete. You don't have to be. You just need to move your mass. Set your alarm every hour and move your mass. Love it. Love it. Uh, and then obviously you're going to be feeling good. So you're going to be hopefully having less stress for that. But what uh, what do you offer back to me? I'm working, you know, six in the morning to six at night and I'm not taking care of myself and I'm crazy stressed out. And now I'm reaching out to you as a new client. What are a couple uh, top tips you have for your clients to just kind of de-stress? Okay, number one, de-stress. I call it 30 before 7.30. Every single morning, you take 30 minutes for yourself. You do not roll out of bed and look at your phone and look at your work day. You roll out of bed and you think only of you. Only of you. You are number one. And you take 30 minutes minimum of you. And I'm not, I don't mean of you brushing your teeth and getting dressed. I mean you getting up, stretching, meditating, prayer, I'm reading a book, anything other than work, anything other than work, because you are not your work. You are a human being that needs love and attention to self. And how else do you do it if you don't take, just think 30 before 730. Do not touch that phone. And if you're used to having your phone by your bedside, put it on the other side of the room. I leave my phone downstairs to much to my, my sister's dismay. If she wants to get me in the middle of the night, she can't. Okay. Not that she would, but yeah, I don't want that in my bedroom. I don't want that temptation. I don't want that ringing. I don't want any of it. I want to sleep because bedrooms are for sleeping and relaxation and de-stressing and, and meditation and all of those other things. So those are the things that it's to always think, what did I say? 30 before seven 30, you take 30 minutes for yourself and if you're like, Tina, nope, not doing that, then you take 30 before 8 or after 8.30 or after 7.30. That's it. That's a good one. I just made that up. So 30 after 7.30 in the evening, you take 30 minutes for yourself. You have lots of kids. I don't care what you're doing. You take 30 minutes for yourself. Okay. Yeah. So that's number one, the de-stress. Take time for self. And within that self-time, then you can do whatever it is that you love to do. I love to walk. So every morning, roll out of bed, put clothes on, put the dog's leashes on, and out the door we go. This morning, I had a little hiccup. I had a little, my cat did a little mess. So I had to clean up that mess. And I got out of the house a little later than normal. I'm like, darn, darn, it threw me off schedule. And, and I'm so used to getting up. And I have a routine. So you have a routine. Build a routine. Get up, put the clothes on, brush your teeth, 
dog leash is on, out the door. Ignore everything. And that's what my mistake was this morning. I didn't ignore that mess that the cat made. I could have just stepped over it. And I should have just stepped over it and stuck with my routine and cleaned it up later. So create a routine of self-care on a daily basis. And within that self-care, what does that mean to you? What does that look like to you? Walking, reading a book, meditating, all of those things that I talked about. There's so much that you just said, and I always love, again, from just being a nurse, self-care. And I just think as a society, we can do such a better job and that for some reason, we're just not consistent in giving ourselves what we need. You know, and I tell people all the time, you have to be greedy. You have to be selfish for yourself in order to allow yourself to go out and do what you need to do and perform in whatever capacity that is, mom, dad, significant other, whatever you're doing for your profession. Um, and then kind of just finding that, that empowerment from taking care of yourself is just going to pay such a huge dividend in all the other relationships that you have uh, in your life. But we got to love ourselves first. Um, and so I love your 30 before 730 uh, of just making that a priority of getting that done. Um, all right. One last question about these top four keys. What happens? This is going to sound bad, but I just got too much going on. Don't have many skills in the kitchen. One reason or another, don't have access to like the great food. Uh, and um, I need to take some sort of supplement. Uh, what do you suggest? Is there, and that's a loaded question, but any ideas on navigating supplements? Because there's just so many out there. How do you find a product you can trust? Um, what advice would you have to somebody that's going to need to take some supplements? Well, I believe that um, there's two supplements that we absolutely need in our lives. And those are, I mean, there's there's lots of supplements that we need, but um, digestive enzymes and probiotics. Those are two incredibly important supplements that we need in our lives. Okay. Digestive enzymes go in and help you digest your food when you take them with food. When you take them away from food, they actually go in and they heal your cells, which is what we need. Um, probiotics, it's a known fact that people who are overweight or obese have more bad bacteria in their gut versus the good bacteria. And it's because they're feeding it with sugar and they scream, feed me sugar, these bad bacteria. I don't talk science here. I'm just going to talk bad and good, right? So we need to inoculate our guts with good bacteria, with a good probiotic. And I'm not talking just, uh, uh, what do you call it, uh, yogurt. I'm talking a really good, good, good probiotic. Um, I've taken lots of supplements throughout my lives and yeah, my lives. How many lives have I had? I don't know. I, I've taken a lot of supplements throughout my life. And I, there are particular ones that I take on a normal basis now for the last 10 years. And they do wonders for me. I even go, I had, I had a sty that would not go away in my eye and I had to do, I had to, it was like going on six weeks take antibiotics and that destroys a lot of the good bacteria in your stomach. I had not one digestive issue through that course of antibiotics because wow. I have such a strong gut because of the supplements that I'm taking, even though I eat really, really well with a lot of cheating, of course, but uh, you still need the supplements. Okay. Even if you are eating all, all organic, our soil just is depleted and we're not getting everything that we need. So, yeah, so there's particular ones that I love. Feel free to reach out to me and happy to talk to you about them. Yeah, and again, listeners, you can find her at tinamcdermott.com and she does have an amazing website and an incredible blog, which I really enjoyed reading uh, a few of those. Um, I know you're staying staying away from any packaged uh, foods, so uh, I love that. And let's get into, we, we talked about it at the start of the show, but your peace process. What? Yeah, what? Let's get into that because I'm not familiar with that. It's a process that I learned through Christian Michelson. I will always give him credit because he certified in me in the peace process. And, and it's been such a phenomenal tool for me personally, as well as my clients. 
and to help them to overcome those emotional issues that are keeping them stuck and keeping them eating the donuts and the bad foods and making the bad choices and and just keeping them stuck in their lives and, and what I call it, the emotional chains that, that keep you stuck or bind you, right? So I, I go in with my client when they're open to it and I have them feel the feeling of what's going on with them right now because it's not necessarily I want to eat that donut. It's I'm stressed because of this or that. And, it, it, and, and that's why I want to eat that donut because it's going to make me feel good, right? So what is that stressor? I, I have them feel that feeling wherever it is in their body. And I have them focus on that feeling, give it color, give it shape, allow it to grow, allow it to shrink, allow it to move here or there. You'll find that feeling. Sometimes it's in my jaw. Sometimes it's in my gut. Sometimes it's in my heart. And you feel that feeling and you just surrender to it. You, you say it's okay. It's, and send it love if you can. And be with that feeling. You you might have fear of being with that feeling, and that's okay. You just know that you're in a safe place. And you breathe through it. And I send healing energy to you through the, these, what we call instant miracles, your instant miracle breaths that just come to you because they come to me from the universe. It's just, I didn't know that I had this, but I do. And I help facilitate your healing. And Oftentimes, sometimes within minutes, sometimes several sessions, that feeling can no longer be felt. It's gone. It's come to neutral at this point. It's neutral. And you are neutral. So no longer do you feel that stress and no longer do you need that donut. And you start craving the foods that walk, fly, swim, and grow. I crave carrots. I crave celery. I crave <laughs> vegetables. I crave them. You think I'm crazy, but I crave them because I don't have a, th there's the physiological part where I don't have bad bacteria that's craving sugar and B I'm neutral when it comes to emotions. I just had, I obviously transparent with everybody. I just had my husband come to my door screaming at me. I, I muted you out that he's looking for something. And I'm like, whatever I have zero emotions towards that because I've healed any kind of emotions that I have towards his stresses or whatever they are. I don't care. And not that I don't care. It's just that they don't charge me. They don't upset me. They don't stress me out. They don't get me to go to food. Yeah. Well, you've created a homeostasis, you know, for yourself while practicing, you know, all that you do uh, on a regular basis and i guess that's well i'm gonna i got two last well three last things one and when you're talking <laughs> i'm sure you're familiar with the word kintsugi have you heard of that uh -uh, i don't it's a it's a ancient art form kintsugi it's k-i-n-t-s-u-g-i i think and it's um the the art of being broken and so they've, uh, again, they've been practicing uh, in, in its Japanese culture. Uh, they've been practicing this for centuries and they would uh, intentionally take a beautiful artifact and break it. Oh. And then they would kind of clean it up, uh, fill it with some lacquer and 24 karat gold and make oh. it uh, a more beautiful artifact and stronger than it was in its original form. And I just, I, I'm in listening to you and I'm getting goosebumps just thinking about that, but I'm saying that's just, that's Kintsugi. That's Kintsugi. And, uh, and it's so cool. And uh, maybe that's something you take and, and offer to your clients because, yeah, and, and some people will disagree because that word broken is, is a strong word. And sometimes people, I think they take that and they think, well, I, I'm broken, I can't heal. You know, but that's not how our body works. You know, our body gets broken and your bones are, are going to heal. You give them the right nutrients. You put them in the right environment, the right culture with love and all the nurturing. And it is going to be stronger than it was before. You go through all the, our conversation early on of this suffering. You know, uh, when you go through that, you realize that you have strength inside you that perhaps maybe didn't even exist before. And I love how your peace process is you're, you're having your clients acknowledge that part in them 
that they really didn't know what to do with. And, uh, and you said early on in the episode of they just stuff it down. And that was such an interesting word choice for me because you're helping people with the, their food selection to create a healthy balance. And Mm -hmm. now I don't have that. So I'm just going to continue to stuff myself with nutrients that don't allow me to heal and don't allow me to get in a good mental space, but just of how your whole way of helping your clients just, Hey, let's just work through that, figure out what that trigger was, acknowledge it. And okay, now that we've done that, let's get on to healing. You know, and and it is goes with with this show, Life's Essential Ingredients. You know, what are those ingredients that have been in your life that maybe perhaps at one point served a purpose, you know, um, that you were hurting and you did turn to food at that time. And and it, it did buy you a little bit of margin at that point in your life where you needed that piece to gain control. You know, to feel like you can have, but okay, are you in that same position now? Or was that something that happened in your childhood? And for some reason, you've been carrying that practice, thinking that you needed that ingredient when the honest truth is you don't. Uh, And what happened in the past is what happened in the past. And one of the things I I feel uh, strongly about is let's try and just do what we can on this day. And that's one of my favorite quotes. Um, I won't give you the backstory. And it's from another unknown. But what I do today is very important because I'm exchanging a day of my life for it. And do I want to what happened in the past continue to come at an expense where it's costing me another day? And maybe that's where in my profession of being a nurse and being surrounded by death and then now having an aneurysm that could, you know, at any point kind of go and my aneurysm goes, that's it. It's game over. There's there's I'm I'm not going to be able to be saved. You know, that's going to be something that's going to just happen. Um, So let's get the the most that we can uh, out of out of each day. And I guess I'm just going to jump to the end because I kind of feel like that's where we're at. It's a good time. So you've lived an incredible life. You've helped people all over the world. You've shared your joy. Uh, You've shared your passion. And there's an incredible quote from John Alston that I love. The only thing you take with you when you're gone is what you leave behind. And what is it that you want the people that have been in your life, your clients, what is it you want them to know and feel in their heart and soul from the time that they had you in, in their life? inspiration to live healthy to live every single day healthy and enjoy inspiration is what comes to me yeah inspiration i love it i love it well listeners this has been a a treat again we've been with tina mcdermott you can find her at tina mcdermott.com again she also has her youtube uh tina's joyful kitchen is that the best place they can find you yep tina joyful kitchen.com Yep. You can tear, tell just by her voice, the passion, the energy, the inspiration that she has uh, for you. If you're not tuning into our YouTube, um, yeah, she's worth checking out. Uh, do you have any closing uh, comments at all to share? Or? You know, I typically end with life is for joy. We've gone there. We've done that. And I want to end with Jeff, the work that you are doing in this world is so important and i wanted to say that i am honored to be on your show and a huge debt of gratitude to you and your partner for having me on the show today thank you uh thank you thank you so much Uh, i go right back at you and listeners you know how we do it boom baby that just happened we'll see you next time